Assalamu alaikum. Mr. Moderator, our distinguished guests, brothers and sisters, our friends and, and our enemies. A lot of bad mouthing of Shepard Lee uh, with regard to his age and mental capabilities. I personally don't agree with a lot of what people say about Shepard Lee. They said that he was going see now because of diabetes, he was picky. So what's your question? I, I, got, I got the layout. You got I'm layout. with you. Now, what's your question? So, uh, so the the question is, with regard to this situation, what do you advise on this situation with regard to the splitting and with regard to honoring the status of the ship? The question was asked about the recent splitting as it relates to Sheikh Rabia ibn Hadd al Mathali, the of Allah Ta'ala. We say, may Allah preserve him, and may Allah pardon him for some of his mistakes or all of his mistakes and straighten out his affairs, as everyone has affairs that need to be straightened out from the human being, and that may Allah substitute his bad deeds to make them good deeds, I mean. This, first of all, um, for some it can be understood as a loaded question. And to be honest with you, I don't know what's considered the recent split. Because as in my talk in the beginning when we talked about brotherhood, I made certain references just to the history of North, East Orange, and it included Jersey City without me saying it because the brothers came from Jersey City and moved to East Orange. And this goes back to the early 90s when we didn't know anything about Sheikh Rabir. Brothers say Sheikh Rabi. No, it's Sheikh Rabir with the iron. Some call him Sheikh Rabi because this is English. So they're jacking up his name to begin with. Rabia ibn Anis, you know, these names are from the Salaf, Tabi'een, Sahaba. So that's the first thing, we want to get his name right. Rabia, not Rabi or Rabi. And then, secondly, the issue goes beyond what we know even to be the fitna that started in the 90s. Because the rule of Islam, and this is why our brother, Abdullah, may Allah bless him, some of the points he made is really for us to digest, and not to feel like it's a good talk, it was fiery, and you go home and that's it. Or why did he say that? I feel some kind of way, you go home and feel some kind of way, and that's it. No, it's, it's bigger than that. When we talk about the rules of Al Islam, it's a primary rule that. When you talk about giving fatawa, and fatawa can't be given by every scholar. There's certain scholars that still, they have not reached the level where they are qualified to give fatawa. Fatawa is not for laymen, it's not for a sheikh, it's not for um, necessarily a person who, the next level after sheikh alam, but fatawa is like at the top of the list. It's almost like a person went through a judge's program, a lawyer's program, a judge's program, and then before that, he did all the shake ship stuff, he's at the top of the list. Then there's a special training to be able to get to the level where you give questions and answers in the religion. So why am I mentioning that? Because the fatawa that 
people understand Sheikh Rabia said way in Saudi Arabia where he's not even and I'm speaking from knowledge and experience and being fair it's not because I don't like the Sheikh it's not because you know I'm not with this camp it's not like because I don't respect scholars it's, these are all of the highlights they mentioned when you talk about something they don't like it's another scholar no I could feel personally some kind of way about Sheikh Rabia, yeah. personally. Because I'm part of the community that his fat will reach here in America, in East Orange, New Jersey, under the leadership of, leadership of Abdullah Taqfi Abu Muslima. I'm part of that community. Mm -hmm. We're still suffering from that right now. I'm part of the community in the match after the death of Sheikh Mukbil, they had affected the whole of Yemen about Sheikh Yahya bin Ali al muri al-Hajuri. I'm part of the community that was rocked around the world. The Muslims that describe to the Dawah that our father al bani and bin Baz taught us a salafi. So personally, I can feel some kind of way. I'm making a point, but I'm not. I'm just speaking true facts. Sheikh Rabia, when he made the fatwa in 1996, most people that's now on the scene, they was either not Muslim, just being straight. Or if they were Muslim, they were Tabliki or Shia, African Americans. Or they was in the joint. Or they were Kufar. They weren't around. They don't know the history. That's why I went back to Bradford Place because Bradford Place precedes all of those in the Sajidi communities. No. So when the Sheikh made that fatwa, and we're talking about the current fitna, that's why I'm going back. Our first knowing about Sheikh Rabia has to do with us here in East Orange. No. We later found out more about him when we went to Yemen and Egypt and so forth. So in East Orange, because an African American was a man who was in charge after Dawood did, because number one, Dawood was the one who brought Abu Muslim. Dawood was the one who brought Sheikh Ahmed Abdullah Abu Uwais. Dawood was the one who brought Abu Osama Abdurrahman Khalif Al Dahabi. Dawood was the one who brought. Uh, uh, Abdul Jalil, who was known for uh, uh, Back to the Bases and Williamsport. Dawood al was the one who brought all of these people together to build a community upon Salafi. That's the first thing. People know that. And the brothers, and I'm not afraid to speak the truth. I don't talk about them. I sometimes speak good about them, but I have a right to be upset. When we talk about Abu Hassan Malik, who was a kid when we were in the match. You understand me? I'm 57. Him and Hassan the Somali, they were kids in their 20s when we were in the match during time Sheikh Mukbil. When Dawood was the Imam and Abu Muslima preceded him and became the Imam, all of them learned from Abu Muslima. Aqidatan, Aqidah. Manhajin, Lugatan, all of that they learned from Abu Muslim. So when the fitna came out, because now he has what, and I mean, it was cocky, but Islamic son of America, nobody liked that. The Arabs, the Africans, the Asians, including the Negro. Well, who did he think he is? Not just Masjid Ahlul Sunnah, but the Islamic son of America? It was a problem. So when they went to Sheikh Rabia, they said there's a man in America, he says that the major scholars of Saudi Arabia are not, to be, not known to be Salafi, they are known to be Hanambali, which is the plural of Hanbali. They're known to be scholars of the Hanbali fit. Now I ask you, and all those people that want to talk about the divide and who's on and off it, What's the court system in Saudi Arabia? What's the court system in Kuwait? What's the court system in Bahrain? What's the court system in Qatar? The Hamilton effect. 
When Alan Benny made that statement back in the 80s, nobody challenged him, nobody said anything. Why? Because he's Alan Benny. His mistakes that he made is greater than some people's correction and the contribution that they made to Islam in Mamad al -Bani. So, of course, nobody said nothing. Well, when Abu Muslima tried to copy that statement because of their lack of knowledge, because of them waiting for something to say, okay, we got them now, they took that to Sheikh Rabia. Sheikh Rabia became upset. Who is he? The first thing he asked, who pays his salary? What they have to do with the question? And again, the rule Islamically, you cannot take a fatwa from one place and import it to another place. During the time of Sheikh Muqbil, during the time of Sheikh Muhammad Sadr Zameen, people used to ask for tawa. And they wouldn't always answer. They would tell them, Allahu Alam, Allahu Alam, until someone went to that place and seen for themselves, or someone credible was sent to investigate and come back, then they would make a fatwa. Okay, so... No, wait, no, 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 patience. Patience, just stay with me. So we're talking about the rules of fatwa. When they went to him and told this man, he says this about the scholars of Saudi Arabia, they're not known to be major scholars upon Salafia, they're known to be humble. Well, they are known to be humble in fiqh. They can, be, they can be Salafi and Aqidah, but the fiqh is known. It's a humbly fiqh, which is nothing wrong with it. So when he heard that, then they start saying he has so-and-so comes to his masjid. Again, Aqid, you can't, if someone comes to somebody's masjid for that, well, I mean, so what? And this man was known to be somebody of Sunnah. But because they said he's Ikhwani, the person who comes to his masjid, he's Takfiri, then the Sheikh said, okay, bring him. So they set him up, brought him on Hajj the next year. And the students that con conjured this thing up, they said, we're going to prove to you when you come for Hajj next year that you're not Salafi. I was there in the argument in the park up in West Orange. They argued about Sheikh Abdurrahman Khalid. Many people might even know who he is. Because Sheikh Rabia criticized him, and the Bani praised him. This is, I mean, and you're talking about students that's in the first year of the Arabic language. You're not even supposed to touch issues, difference of opinion, rulers. A first year Arabic student? So they went to Sheikh Rabia, they set this thing up, and when Abu Muslima went on Hajj the next year, they picked them up, which was normally the norm. And they go visit people with knowledge and go to their houses. Well, they went to Sheikh Rabia's house. He didn't know. They had students there, and they asked him. The Sheikh asked through a translator, did you say the major scholars of Arabia are not known to be celebrated in Hanbali? Abu Muslima said no. Allahu Alam, if he lied because he was afraid, he felt some fitna about to happen. Allahu Alam, if he said no because he changed his mind, he didn't believe that anymore. Allah, Allahu Alam, if he said no because he forgot, but he said no. The Sheikh, he said, what did he say? They played the tape in English, his doubts in the Meshkid, where he made the statement. They stopped it. The Sheikh said, what did he say? Because it's in English. Shabir, he said, what did he say? The student said, he said to you, Sheikh, he said on tape what he said to you that he didn't say. The Sheikh, he said, Enter Hizbi Kadab. Hizbi Kadab. Hizbi means you're outside the Sunnah. Kadab, you are a liar. I do what you have in Dawah. You are an enemy to this Dawah. The people jumped up and said, The Sheikh, Kufi went sideways and had to grab him. Of course, Abu Muslim, he's a, bit, he's a man. I'm sorry, I didn't lie because it's a Sheikh. No, it's okay. You yeah, could laugh and not laugh. It's a human, I think. So when he broke everything up, then the Sheikh calmed down a little bit. He said, you know, I'm sorry. I'm Muslim. He said, get off of me. Because he wanted to grab the Sheikh, you know, uh, uh, the, he wanted to grab a Muslim hand. He just snatched away. He said, oh, look, he's being disrespected. Look, man, you just called him at a hizbi. Cut down. I do want the dawah. You ask who pays his salary. We're going to stop from being paid. That's the origin of this fitna that we're dealing with to this day in America. The origin that I understand. No, 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 not what you understand. You ask me. I'm giving you a reply. I was there. I'm from, the, I'm, from, I'm, I'm, I'm from there. So that's the origin. Now, whatever they're talking about now, the shake is see now he has sugar. I mean, I feel if he's see now has sugar, that happens. 
If he's not seen now that has sugar, that, that I mean, there have people in the chain of hadith, his hadith is taken, but then in his latter part of his age, he becomes senile. So they say the hadith in the early part of his age, when he was competent, is sahih. The hadith later on, when he goes senile, you can't take it. So that could be true. But that's not saying they disrespected the shaykh. How could they say about the shaykh? This is the glue that all of the ulama warned against. This is the glue, you know, that he's attacking the sky. I mean, what are you talking about? Shaykh Bukhba died from a parasite, ate his liver up. If somebody says they're attacking Sheikh Mukbil, Sheikh Uthaymeen died from cancer. He was here in, in Boston getting chemo. If somebody says they're attacking Yani Sheikh Uthaymeen, I mean, what is this except what the Prophet said? Be afraid, and I warn you of being glue. Being extreme with your righteous. The brothers, they went on only to take a picture of the sandals, sitting in the back. Look at the Sheikh's sandals. I mean, what is this? This borderline shirk, Aki, he's a man. He's a man, Aki, and he's a man who made a lot of fitna. They took the whole Yemen off the Manhattan. Aki, how do you take, no, 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 no. Excuse me, I said he made a lot of fitna. And Hajuri made a lot of fitna too. No, 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 no. You got, but, but you ask the question so you could get an answer or you want something else. You didn't get an answer. No, but I didn't. You cut me off. I'm not finished. I just told you the Hajuri. He's Khalifa to Mughbir. He's our Sheikh. But guess what? He caused a lot of fitna. Am I attacking my own Sheikh from the etiquette of the Sheikh with the student? You don't attack your Sheikh. So I can't say Al Hajuri, he's a Mukhtar. I can say he has mistakes. I can say the good he brought out to Sheikh Mukbil died. I mean, it, it happened. What happened to Imam Bukhari and his Sheikh Muhammad? His Sheikh was asked, can we go take knowledge from Bukhari? He said, I encourage you. He's young, he's half of he's this, he's that, he's passed the test. But the Sheikh didn't know his students was going to go to Bukhari and not come back to him. When that happened, he plotted against Bukhari. Now all of a sudden, Bukhari, he views the Quran as created. And this is the Aqi. These are human issues. And that's why in my talk about brotherhood, I talked about the pillars of Kufr. How the shaitan uses that to break up the brotherhood. And what is more of a destruction of brotherhood than now you have shiyuk breaking up the very people that's supposed to be their children, the very people that's supposed to go to them for knowledge? But we want to hear that. It's old. Oh, but what about? No, I think it is what it is. You never mentioned my review. I don't have to mention. No, I don't have to mention that because guess what? That wasn't even here in America. No, excuse me, excuse me. My rubby never came here. The brothers used that to make fit the here. People didn't even know who my rubby was in America. We knew in Yemen, we knew in Egypt, we knew in the Emirates, but we... Ahi, you talking about some crap, Ahi, that people made up, Ahi. Nobody knew about a Ma'ribi here in America, Ahi. The brothers brought that here. Even when Abu Waste was alive, he said, why y'all want to check this out? Since you talking. When Abu Waste was alive, they wanted him to make a bayan. Man, Abu Waste brought Cats to the Dawah, Hassan Somali, Bilal Davis, all of them. They wanted to know, excuse me, excuse, excuse me, excuse me. They wanted him to make a bayan. If you don't make a bayan, you are straight. First of all, the seven thing use bayan like that when somebody wants you to clarify something. They use bayan when they themselves realize they were wrong. So he said, what I need to make bayan for? It's enough that the man is there with the other man they criticize him. That's Abu Ways, Ahim. So they bogusly brought that issue to our people in America. Nobody knew about the Mark Ribby, and we still don't care about him. We didn't take from him. We didn't know who he was. Most people didn't know who he was. Until they made that issue public and said, oh, Mark Ribby, Mark Ribby, Mark Ribby. It's a game, I keep. It's a game. And if we keep doing this and don't do what Naeem said in his advice, or what other people have said in their advice, or what I said in my advice, we ain't gonna never go nowhere, I think. That stuff happened, it was bogus, and the proof it wasn't from the way of the seller, 
Sheikh Islam Taymiyyah, he said, Ahlul Sunnah, Arhaman Nas Li Khalid. The people of the Sunnah, they're the most merciful to the creation. Do we, do we, do we see, do we see that as mercy? Sheikh Allah Bani declared, and he said specifically, clearly, that the, the holder of the banner of Jabba Tadim... Akhi, Akhi, let me, let, 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 let me tell you, Akhi, do you know Arabic? Do you know Arabic? Do, do you know Arabic? Maybe, maybe not. No, okay, no, it's not maybe, or maybe not. To talk about those issues, you got to know Arabic. Because you got to go into the books where that stuff is explained. Don't tell me what Sheikh, what Sheikh, Sheikh al Bani mentioned about one man. Do you know the context of that statement? Let me finish. I got this. I got this. But the Jawatai Dili Imam, first of all, that was only meant to be for the books. That's the first thing. Sheikh al Bani, no, when he mentioned that, I think this is the end, man. Y'all stop interjecting. No, yeah. When 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 Sheikh when Sheikh revealed that was mentioned by Al Bani, that was mentioned from the perspective of books. That was yeah. From the he was excuse, excuse me, brother. Excuse me, brother. Excuse me, brother. Ahi, we spend knowledge, Ahi. You ask me something. No, you're not. Ahi, 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 excuse me. Ahi, Ahi, excuse me. Sheikh Al Albani mentioned that statement about Rabia, but he didn't just mention about Rabia if you want to be, be, be know about that. He mentioned about Sheikh Mukbil too. Nobody talks about that. Nobody talks about it. He mentioned them in the same statement. Nobody talks about that. But when he mentioned that about Sheikh Rabia, he was talking about in the books of going, checking the chain, and criticizing the people in the chain. That's the origin of Joe and Tadir. That excuse me. I'm telling you the context. I hate. You ain't talking to no janitor, man. You talk to somebody who know. I'm explaining to you. The context of that is from the books, I think. Because some ulama said there's no Jehotah deal after the people in the chain die. So if the people in the chain die, then how is somebody imam of something that don't exist some, no more? Some people take the position. That was the position of Sheikh bin Bass. That there's no more Joe Tadil after the people in the chain die. And Sheikh Fozan takes that position. So what Sheikh Al Albani meant was in the books. That's where Sheikh Rabia became known for scholarship of hadith. In the books, checking the chains. That's how he became known when he talked about saying Qutb from the books. Not the people who are alive and dealing in people's affairs and people's community. He went too far with that, I think. And that's not disrespecting, that's talking the hop. Okay, then if that's disrespecting, then let it be disrespect. It's not disrespect. You ask the question, getting the answer, and that's disrespect. What kind of Islam is that, Akhi? Y'all want to worship a man. That's the problem, Akhi. Y'all want to worship a man. And guess what? Guess what? Why he said that about Sheikh Rabia? What does he say about y'all in America? He don't even ask the call from America no more because he realized the fitness that the brothers made here. They don't even answer the calls no more. Even his son. Muhammad, they don't take no calls from those brothers from Salafi publications in America and Great Britain and Canada because they realize the fitness. Now put that in the pipe and smoke it. Oh, it's put, it's put there. Okay? This is why I'm not, I can't go back and forth. You, you don't have the knowledge, first of all. The etiquette is you ask and you receive. If you don't agree, you're not back. But you're not asking and you go back and forth. Well, so and so said, how can you talk about people who was in Yemen peeing green stuff out there? I face skinny like we on crack and cancer seeking an enemy. You want to debate something? No, it's a reality, I think. Then we talk about Sheikh Rabia. We still suffer from that fitna, I think. And we think a man can't make fitna? He's better than Hajjaj and Yusuf, who, you, who, who, who slayed Sahaba and made fitna, but he was a leader. Ahi, Ahi, he, listen, part of being an alim is that you don't fall into fitna with people who are common folk. Common folk took that to him. People who didn't even graduate with an eighth grade education. People that was felons out of prison. When, Ya Sheikh, Mashallah. Ahi, that's not the character of an alim. 
He's an Adam, but he dropped the ball, Aki. And it ain't just with this issue, it's many issues. Again, they took the whole Yemen off the Menhaj. How you do that? All them two lab, they became all the mouth from Sheikh Mukbil. You take the whole Yemen off the Menhaj, Aki? You can't tell me nothing, Aki. I got people that shed blood over this issue. You want to talk about another man and respect that he? I got brothers that cried, my thong wet, because they took his wife, convinced her he's a mook teddy, and you sell a fear, then you got to get a hold up. What you talking about, Aki? This is real. Them same people they talking about, Shadid and Abu Osama, guess what? They were with him at one time. Overnight, they became the enemy. Mukhtani, don't take from you. Gotta be kidding me, Aki. And this is why the brotherhood is in critical condition. And this is why it's, it's, why it's in critical condition. I want to see where we were at. No, this is where we at, Aki. In critical condition. And guess what? When Sheikh Kabir died, because we so miskeen as African Americans, still suffering from the, the plague of slavery, the victim will still be alive like the Sheikh alive. That's how tired bad we are. May Allah forgive us. May Allah heal us. May Allah, May Allah make us turn to him. Because this is shirk. This is shirk. To put a man on a pedestal like is shirk. It is, Abu Billah. It's shirk. Now go to them same books that they talk, get tap to he and see the evidence is there. It's shirk. When you make a man that great and that man makes something that's haram, halal, and you go with it, it it's shirk. Learn your dean, I think. Salam alaikum. The conversation is over. So yeah, from what's up then? What's up then? At least some people got some benefit out of that 50 we brought out. He did. Father, I was outside though. Uh, uh, the two, the two, um, the two conditions that you yeah. stated about um, what takes the and what what is uh oh man, I'm so caught up now. That's what Yes. Yes, Naeem, if he was mentioning that, but I, everything has major and minor. You have major and minor shirt, major and minor kufu, major and minor nifat, major and minor bid'a. Everything is major and minor. Major always takes you outside of Islam. For example, bid'a, something that's not legislated in the religion, major and minor. So grave worship. Going to the grave and making dua to the one in the grave. That's bid'ah. It's not legislated. And they all believe they're going to gain closeness to Allah by doing that. But it's major because it's shirk. So minor bid'ah will be someone who, when he reads the Quran, he rocks like this. It's minor bid'ah. Some people do it because they bored and they want to keep emotion. But some people, they believe if it's okay because it's part of the Quran and they get close to Allah, that would be minor bid'ah. They implement it. Yeah, yeah, but it doesn't take them outside of uh, the fold of Islam. It doesn't take them outside. And by the way, the Prophet was asked about the person uh, praying behind a man who yani, Allah, has fisk, made you sin or open disobedience. The Prophet he said, Yani, uh, in Bukhari. Pray behind him because your salat will be for you and his sin will be upon him. The scholar said that is minor bid'ah. If it was major bid'ah, the Prophet would allow you to pray behind him like a grave in the masjid or you're praying and the grave is in the masjid. Some countries they actually have the grave in the masjid. That would be considered major bid'ah. This issue that we're talking about now. Well, why are people think we pick it on a man? I think they've been doing this for years. I, I mean, wow. generations after the death of the prophet. Making a person who's a scholar on a level that he's not. It's shirk, I think. Yeah, sure. But it's bid'ah at the same time. It's bid'ah. Nobody, what did Imam Malik say? Everybody's statement could be accepted or rejected. He said, In the eyes I saw him, and he pointed at the cover, the one in the grave, and the Bijou. Who's greater? Imam Malik or Shikrabiya? Who's greater? Imam Malik al Albani. Who's greater? 
Imam Yani, so and so, or those people from the first three generations. They're greater. It happens, Akhi. It happens, Akhi. But to make it like, you know, yeah. somebody disrespect. No, Akhi, we have to call the haq the haq, Akhi. And now at the Sheikh old age, he's repentant. The same stuff they're talking about, guess what? He said with Al Hajuri. But during the fitna, he wouldn't even let the Sheikh speak to him. Now he said with Sheikh Yahya. They don't want to talk about that. The man is repentant. You get up in age, you start thinking, you know, let me try to correct some of this stuff because I'm going back to my. That's by nature, Ahi. Nobody's above that. No. But they don't remove the fit that the Sheikh made, Ahi. Listen, at one time, Sheikh Mukbil and Sheikh Muhammad al Wahhabi Wasabi said, Sheikh Rabin Kana Jasus, he was a spy. They don't want to talk about that. But if we mention a little point here and there, we're attacking them. They said the man was an agent for the Saudi government. Whether they were right or wrong, listen, we're talking about human beings, I think. We're talking about human beings, I think. And no one man has the power if he says something that's it. What the hell are you talking about? I want not care if Abu Bakr said he was the imam of general idea. Do we think they meant that? Whatever he says, take. Whatever he don't say, then don't. Come on, I It's hard. And this is why we got the fitna in the brotherhood because of ignorance. He argued, he don't even know Arabic. He talking about some Abu Awais. I can just go way back before that. And then he want to spread it to people. I think you don't know who you're affecting with that garbage. Keep your mouth shut. You said in the whole lesson of brotherhood, you couldn't hold that. Now he's going texting somebody, calling somebody. This, see, look. <laughs> Do you see him in the store? You give him some lines like Abu uh, uh, Sajid said. Yeah, act like he's reading the peanut butter. <laughs> yeah. This is the disease, Ahi, over another man that if he's a scholar, I might, Allah might forgive him. But what about us? Is he going to forgive us for the fit that we're carrying on? And it's our community. We don't have no schools. We barely can keep the masjid that we're paying rent. Ahi, we're in bad shape, Ahi. We hate one another over another man said way somewhere. Most people don't even know how to say his name. Shake Rabbi. What is his name? So, may the brothers forgive me. I hate this type of ignorance. I, listen, I come too far to show my love, to visit the brothers for that nonsense. You know what I'm saying? This is upsetting. And Allah hates it. Definitely. Allah make it easy. So, so the, a, a, a last thing, I mean, I mean. But sometimes you have to stand up against the heart. I think. That was patience, I think. <laughs> to, to, to talk like that and not put my hands on them. Sahaba would have put their hands on them. Because we, the, it looks like he didn't wait. The, the point, like, I don't think he came. I don't think he came to the benefit. The, 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 the truth of the matter is, we, those who come from Africa, we know what you're talking about. Just pretend. Allah, 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 but I, I just didn't feel that the brother came, number one, to really benefit. Because number one, you can see how when you ask a question and then you're not getting the reply you want. Even if you're different with the speaker. Yeah. But that's still not the way. Like it seemed like he came to, to, to make, that to make it yeah. or that yeah. well, question well, was like. But so the one, the, the, one thing, the, the one thing, the one thing, the one thing I wanted to add, yeah, Juan, before he left, this whole issue in reality is the issue of ishtihadiyah, number yeah. one. So even if you say it's a scholar's mention. Um, he mentioned Ma'aribi. And as the Sheikh said, nobody in America was affected by Ma'aribi. We didn't even know him. You know, if you go back, even today, you go to the different masajid in America, and whatever your position is, because some of the scholars differ over Ma'aribi. And that's something I wanted to mention too, but you know, the, we don't, I just didn't get that he, brought, he came to benefit. And number two, I wanted the Sheikh to finish his point. And number three, the issue of Ma'aribi, Ikhwan, whatever your stance is, if you feel he's on the Sunnah still, if you feel he made some mistakes that take him outside of Islam or Salafiyyah, if you feel he made some errors but he's still Salafi, the ulama say all three positions. Some scholars say Ma'arabi is an innovator. 
Some scholars say Madhabi is a Sunni, he's Salafi, but his eras, uh, they, they're major, but he's still Salafi. And some say, whatever they say about him, some say he's being like this and like that. My point is, some scholars of Sunnah today, and we can mention the names if you wish, they're still alive today, differ over Madhabi. My point is, this whole issue is Ishtihadiyah. If you mention a scholar's name, Yahwah, nowadays, you could take three different mashaykh and all three of them are Ahlul Sunnah. You could choose whatever you wish. You're going to get three different answers. So my point is, let me, my point is, Yahwah, that's their ijtihad, number one. If this sheikh is right who says Ma'arabi is an innovator, if he's right and he's a mujtahid, he gets two rewards. If he's wrong, he still gets one reward. It's not the same for us, number one. My point is, and I hope, I wish America, we understood this, this issue, it shouldn't really divide the way it divides if we understood it's of ijtihadiyah. You name the sheikh. You go to Sheikh Rabir, you go to Sheikh Fozan, you go to Sheikh Abdul Mursin. Just for example, you're going to get three different answers. Sometimes the one that this one praises, this one warns against. Some, and he's a student of him. And sometimes the one that this one warns against, this one praises. My point is, that's they're giving you what they deem to be correct. Yeah, yeah. So if he's right in what he's saying, he gets to reward. According to the hadith of the Messenger Ali Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, hadith Abdullah bin Amr bin As, that's collected by Imam Muslim. If he's wrong, he still gets one reward. The problem is that us in America, going back, not knowing Arabic once again, as we mentioned, we mistake the Shaykh statement. So we just say, oh, Shaykh Abdul Mursin praises this one, so whoever doesn't praise him is off of it. Yeah, and and that's not the statement. Some of just or the culture do, that they created that. Also, people also, know Arabic, they call them with the same fitna. Also, and, and, also, and, and, you, you know, know, to a certain degree. Yeah, but it's it's, if we it's understood culture. that, Yahuwah, number one, we go to the shaykh of an issue that's not in the Quran and Sunnah. It's not in the Quran and Sunnah. Who's off of it, who's on it, from people of today. You're not going to find it in the Quran and Sunnah. So you go to a scholar that you trust from Ahl Sunnah. Yeah, shaykh, what do you say about this one? The problem is that whatever this sheikh says, we make a judgment for others. I agree with the sheikh, certain such is off of it. Whoever does not agree with the sheikh is off of it. That's, that's part of the issue right there. I mean, and that's, that's the main to, issue. To be honest with you, we have had this stuff like six, seven years ago yeah. for them. I'm not the Imam of Joe jo 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 Ta'adil. Yeah, like it's so much we could have said. Yeah, come on. The people be quiet, yeah. the awam. Common folks shouldn't even be talking about this anyway. Yeah. But they don't want to take that. Yeah. It was a whole no. eight minute and twenty something yeah. second talk he gave. Yeah. And he wasn't seen now then. Did they take that? Yeah, you're right. I mean you're when right. They told them come back and make it with your Salafi brothers. I don't see this one and this one and this one. They be astray. Did they come back and do that? No, no. I told the brothers, shh, don't say nothing. The, the point, another point you we know, can so add to that, Yaquan, culture, man. as we mentioned, culture. study the Qur'an and Sunnah. Culture, because now you're going to understand in your memorization of Qur'an and Sunnah, anyone else's words outside the Messenger of Allah, you can't make a ruling by it. <laughs> but in America, if my sheikh says it, I'm going to make a ruling for it. That's incorrect. Or this, like it seems like the brother, and I don't know the, this man, it seems like he had an issue what Sheikh Rabir said. And we love Sheikh Rabir. He's a scholar of Ahl Sunnah. As the brother said, if there's some errors, we make the offer the Sheikh. That's from that's from the methodology of Ahl Sunnah. Alhamdulillah. You love the people. You love the Muslims. You love the ulama. You love the students of knowledge. You love the righteous. You love the honor. Alhamdulillah. But the truth is the truth. If something is wrong, you say it's wrong. You keep the honor. For example, at any rate, you can't make a judgment or a ruling from someone's statement, and you throw this statement on the Muslims. You can't do that. And that's incorrect. I don't know what his reason was, but he's still talking about what they... Yeah, the, even the, when he mentioned, i give an example, yeah, now, when, he mentioned, when he mentioned Ma'aribi, like I said earlier, whatever your stance is, I guarantee you, you've never read one of his books. I guarantee you, you've never heard one of his lectures. The average Muslim in America in 2000, whatever, 2021. I guarantee you, nobody in your community has ever translated a lecture in front of the people of whatever your stance is for I mean, Madhavi. Really I guarantee nobody doesn't even know. Folk, like the brother I mentioned, know, yeah, what, what, we yeah. brung his name. Nobody knew yeah, nobody to, to, to today. You say, who's Madhavi? Oh, no. Tell me one of his machines. Tell me one of his books. Yeah. Tell me whatever your stance is, even if you praise him. Because some scholars still do praise him. Yeah. And other scholars differ. And they say he's no longer a Sunni. No, that's, that's not my problem. That's his ishtihad. That's it, she had.
Alhamdulillah. But my point is, I guarantee you, in 2021, you've never read one of his books. The average Muslim. I guarantee you. I guarantee you, you can't go on YouTube and you're going to see a masjid in America and the translator is translating with Ma'ari be on the phone. Or a lecture of Ma'ari. I guarantee you're not going to see it. So we haven't been affected by his, 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 his issue the way that they in, in the West. The they we haven't been affected by it. So for you to make a ruling, what do you say about this sheikh? I never heard of that sheikh. I never read his books. I, me, Abu Abdullah. I've never read one of Mahdi's, Mahdi's books. Not one. They took about Abu Osama because Abu Osama said. And then if you go to like what Abu Osama said, statement. I mean, if he agrees, and that's the thing, I hope, I hope I mean, we do more memorizing of Quran and Sunnah. For the point we just mentioned. We're not going to make rulings about anybody else's statement. Not the companions, not the tabi'un. You're going to learn this is not from the Quran and Sunnah. Anyone other than the Messenger, والسلام, you can take it as a benefit, but you can't take it as it's the Quran. You can't take it as it's a hadith, the Messenger. والسلام, you can't. That's not correct to do. Not even a companion. If the companion is different on the issue, I can't take Aisha's position and Abu Bakr has another opinion and Abu Huraira has another opinion and I give I make Aisha's statement a rule over Abu Bakr. And you can't do that over Ali. You can't do that. If they differ in something and it's not based upon evidence which one is the most correct, you, you can't do that. Yeah. But the Quran and Sunnah teaches you that. That's why the more we memorize Quran and Sunnah, I guarantee we're going to give our opinions less and we're not going to make rulings by anyone else's statements, not even the ulama. Because it's not correct to use the ulama as a hujjah. None of the scholars say that. Not Sheikh Rabir, not Sheikh Yahya, not Sheikh... None of them say that. You use my statement as a hujjah? One time Sheikh Rabir mentioned the statement of Ibn Taymiyyah. And then he said, I differ with Ibn Taymiyyah here. He mentioned his statement. And then he said, I differ with him here. So if he can differ with Ibn Taymiyyah, then you can't differ with him. My point is, he's teaching you the minhajiyah in that statement. He's giving you Ibn Taymiyyah's ijtihad, and he's saying he differs with it. The issues of ijtihadiyah, Juan, you can't use them as a rule, as a, as a governed rule for everybody. Islam is not like that. The statement of the Messenger of Allah, the statements of Allah, that's something. But you can't take a statement of a scholar, any scholar, my sheikh, your sheikh, it doesn't matter. And I say, since Sheikh Alabani said, if you don't take this statement, you're off of it. No. That's not correct. Hello. If that's his ishtihadiyya, if he's correct, as the Prophet said, he gets to reward. If he's incorrect, he gets from reward. So, Ma'arabi comes up. Okay, this Shaykh deems him to be on the Sunnah. How's that going to harm you? This Shaykh deems him to be outside the Sunnah. How's that going to harm you? That's his ishtihad. That's ishtihad. Next point. So we'll stop there, Ikhwan. And may Allah bless you all, Ya Ikhwan, for your patience. May Allah bless you for your patience with the Sheikh, yeah, for that brother, Ya Ikhwan, for, for the brother, Ya Sheikh. But it appeared that he didn't really want to benefit anyway. Yeah, yeah, may Allah bless you. Yeah, that's yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, right now we're in Philly. No, alhamdulillah. Oh, yeah, I'm okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm going to try to start. I'm, I'm not that far from your brothers, Ya Ikhwan. Oh, you got a website or something? Yeah, I'm going to give you my account.